Hello everyone, I'm Pacific the Casual Gamer and welcome back to another video. And today I want to talk about if Battlefield 1 is still a fun game. I know I haven't talked about Battlefield 1. Like I, I made a, a tutorial a couple days ago about the Gavar M95, but I haven't really talked about Battlefield 1 in a while. And I have to say, I got back on it recently because of, I noticed the Turning Tides, four of the six maps have been released for turning tide so i was like okay i'll try it out and my god it is still a fun game right so let me break this down for you we had the french maps which were very warlike right very just go at each other the russian maps which are very long very calculated and now we have turning tides which is close quarters cliffs and sea battles and my god this is am I am I, this is amazing. This is like the a replay of Battlefield 4, but they didn't break the game first, so they don't have a reason to give you the DLC for free. I'm I'm not even kidding. Like it's insane. So if you guys don't know Battlefield 4, a bunch of DLC came out for Battlefield 4 back in the day. And because the game was broken, pretty much everyone got all of it for free. I'm pretty sure like the entire season passed for free at one point. And that game is phenomenal with all the DLC. It's a lot of fun. And Battlefield 1, it's the same thing. But, but this is a big one. The way that they have it set up is really weird, but somehow it works together. And this is my favorite part about Battlefield 1, right? Is even though there is shortcut kits, and DLCs that you have to buy really to get the full experience. I would actually say that, you know, I bought the season pass and I bought the deluxe edition. So I'm down $130, I think, something like that. And I've got to say, this is a $130 game for me. I've spent a lot of hours on this game and I am still happy to come back. All three DLCs. That have come out for the game i have thoroughly enjoyed as much as the base game and after the dlcs are done i will go back and you know play through some of the you know after like third dlc is done i'll probably go back and play the first one and the second one in the multiplayer it's great i love it so much it's it's just fun i think that definitely um the devs are improving their skills in map design for this game because what I noticed is compared to the base maps uh, these new like turning tide maps are the way they flow is insanely better than the way that the first original maps flowed which most of them flowed really well right and this first DLC the maps even flowed better than the base game and the Russian DLC the Russian one is still so far, it is still my favorite one, but it is it th those maps are amazing, and these maps are the same way. Now I've only played, um, I've I played a little bit, but it's it, it's so much fun, and I love what I love is the system they have set up. So for unlocking weapons, so if you don't know, there's vanilla game, you level up your character, and you have you unlock weapons that you can buy with in-game currency that you earn only from leveling up. After those though, every DLC has some weapons in it and those weapons you unlock via challenges. So maybe to unlock this sniper rifle, you have to maybe get like five kills with K bullets and 50 kills with whatever sniper rifle, right? That's kind of the, the way that they flow in this game. And it, it, I like that kind of gameplay style. Okay, because yes, the DLC weapons are arguably pay to win. I think they they kind of fit in with the balancing of the other guns, actually. But you can't just buy the DLC and get the weapons. You have to level up, and you have to unlock the weapons via the challenges. And some of the most overpowered weapons are hidden behind the most hardest to do of challenges and they keep updating the game too they change the battle pack system so you actually earn battle packs you earn a lot of scrap now there's perks in the game now 
that you can unlock via challenges again. The thing that keeps me coming back to this game that Call of Duty doesn't. Okay, and Call of Duty has its own its own good things. Call of Duty, you unlock stuff by leveling up. That's it. In this game, you unlock stuff by getting good at playing every way. The game kind of, it doesn't make you, but it helps you flow into playing all the different ways of doing it. They're playing all the different ways of playing the game. It's, I love it so much. That is, I think, um, I, I know I said Call of Duty World War II would beat out Battlefield 1, but I think that I, I, I am an owner of both games and I don't have game loyalty. I right now think that Battlefield 1 is the superior product to World War 2. World War 2, I don't know how many hours I put into each game, but I think Battlefield 1 is the superior product. And it's because, I think mainly because there's more substance to it in terms of gameplay. Um, the skill gap, more so in World War II. There's still a skill gap in Battlefield 1. But I think the another big thing is the monetization. Battlefield 1 earned those DLCs from me. I, I, I they, they earned it. I feel like the base game was good and the DLCs, you know, yeah, take my money. I want that. I want the DLCs. And, you know, that Battlefield 1 is turning... Right now, with the three DLCs, it is a $120 product. And Call of Duty World War 2 right now just isn't that... You know, it took them a while to get off the ground. It's got insanely predatory monetization schemes right now. I wouldn't say... Yeah, I would call them schemes. And unlocking... You can pay to unlock the guns. That's the big thing is you can pay, you can actually end up paying to unlock the guns in Battlefield One. You gotta earn that, right? And I think that's a smart move on Dice actually to be like, oh, people hate monetization. Our sister game Battlefront Two kind of oh okay Battlefield One, don't touch it, leave it alone, don't mess with it. So, really, I I. I is it worth it to go back to Battlefield 1 after Turning Tides? That's a question that I think I'm going to ask myself. Yes. Come back. Play Turning Tides. Then play the other DLCs. It's so much fun. It is... It, like, I didn't think Battlefield 1 could get better. And it's better. But that's going to be it for this video, guys. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed, you can tell me in the comments below. Subscribe if you're new. What is your favorite DLC of Battlefield 1? I gotta ask you, which one was a 1, 2, or 3? I think for me personally, right now, it was 2. But they're almost all different enough to where I won't even consider comparing them. But that's it. I'm Pacific the Casual Gamer. I suck just as bad as you do video games. And I'll see you in the next episode, stream, vlog, or steam and post of whatever I decide to make.